Do you ever stop for a second and think what technology the US and her allies had before World War II? Do you ever consider what advancements the Germans made during this time period, apparently using ancient texts that have seemingly never been recovered? If Germany developed these things from texts that have since been hidden away or destroyed, then all the technology that we have today are based on the advancements the Germans made. You're talking stealth technology, guided missiles, lasers, and even fiber optic communications. But to name a few, what all this is, is an inventory of what the Nazis had in their arsenal after World War II had concluded. They developed technology that was previously beyond comprehension in just a few years, and we are still using and adapting this today. Wait till you hear this. It is incredible to note that the German advancements made during World War II were nothing short of highly advanced even by today's standards. In fact, it was nothing short of a miracle that we won the Second World War when you begin to understand that the Germans really should have been invincible with these things. Makes you wonder about some sort of intervention in the name of humanity prevailing over an evil agenda. The area these advancements were made is now Poland, and Adolf defended this area to the last possible moment of World War II. The Russians took Berlin and the Allies were diverted to this part of what was then Germany to take the technology from under the noses of the Russians. You are talking about the acquirement of super weapons. The technology factories that were seized were jam-packed full of stuff in development. This is where the greatest minds of our planet were forced to make advancements using the ancient text. This knowledge was sliced down the middle of the end of World War II and that led to a technological war between the US and her allies and Russia, the likes of which the world had never seen before. Is it possible that even between two of the world's most powerful political rivals, there is a secret understanding? one based on American and Russians past and future roles in outer space. Does this extend to numerous experiences involving extraterrestrial contact? As evidence, they point to an occasion that took place just a few months after Dmitry Medvedev's now famous exchange with Barack Obama. Президенту страны приносят специальную папку. На ней написано совершенно секрет. И она целиком и полностью посвящена пришельцам, которые посетили нашу планету. Одновременно предоставляется доклад. Это абсолютно закрытый. On December 7th, 2012, after giving a primetime network interview in Moscow, Medvedev made remarks off stage which seemed to openly acknowledge the existence of extraterrestrials and the Russian government's efforts to keep that existence a secret. Although most of the journalists in the room believed the Russian president's remarks to have been made in jest, there were others who were not so certain. This is one of the most dramatic statements that emanates out of Russia, and so it's fascinating. Dmitry Medvedev said, when you become president of Russia, you're given information on aliens in our country and the human groups that are monitoring them. He was totally with a straight face during all of this. Here he is on film saying that there is a secret governmental cooperation occurring in the background that has the highest levels of classification to really monitor extraterrestrials that are visiting our planet. Forget all the differences, forget ideologies, at the highest level, the two nations work together. After World War II, there was a number of UFO encounters, very important encounters, and this gave impetus to joint cooperation between the nations. Even during the tension-filled decades of the Cold War, experts believe that not only did such a secret relationship exist, but that it began several decades ago as a consequence of what they believed to be the Soviet Union's first documented UFO encounter, an event they commonly refer to as the Russian Roswell. In June of 1948, at a remote Soviet military installation known as Kaputstin Yar, an unidentified flying object is detected over the base. Strange blips were seen on radar. Something was tracked performing extraordinary speeds and maneuvers, and a Russian fighter jet was scrambled to intercept it. 
The pilot saw a silver cigar shaped object and was told, shoot this thing down, it's in restricted military airspace. The UFO fired some sort of direct energy weapon, a death ray, but before the Russian jet was downed, it managed to launch a missile and shot down the UFO. Some people have speculated this was the time that the Russians found out about extraterrestrials. According to the myths and legends, at Kaputskin Yar, they actually recovered bodies. They recovered the spacecraft itself, and it was kept there for study and reverse engineering. We are told that there is an underground facility under Kaputskin Yar, similar probably to facilities here in the States, where a full examination could be performed on the pilots of these craft. To researchers, what makes this story all the more significant is that it occurred within a year of the now infamous Roswell incident, in which a UFO reportedly crashed in the New Mexico desert sometime in June of 1947. This took place near the only active military unit in the world that had nuclear weapons. It was known as the Roswell 509th Bombing Unit, and they were armed to the teeth with nukes. Similarly, over the Soviet Union, at places like Kaputskin Yar, we've got significant UFO activity being reported, military engagements just like in the United States. And many believe that extraterrestrials had a strong interest in the nuclear technologies that were then developing on planet Earth, which is exactly why they were there. Could it be that both the Kaputskin Yar and Roswell incidents were attempts by extraterrestrials to make contact because of mankind's recent development of nuclear weapons. But if such contact did occur, did it signal an era of secret cooperation between the world's two great superpowers, or did it only trigger a greater degree of rivalry and competition? In Roswell, you had the crash. You had to recover alien bodies, but the aliens were dead. There was no way to communicate with them because they had been killed. So we had the technology, but probably no really good idea on how to start reverse engineering it. Whereas at Kapuskin Yar, as the story goes, they not only got the spacecraft itself, but apparently there was at least one survivor of the incident. So what could the Russians possibly have learned from that alien extraterrestrial biological entity that they were not able to learn from our Roswell incident? Why were the Russians first into space? Why did they manage to do Sputnik 1 and then send Yuri Gagarin up into orbit and leave the Americans standing? Because on paper, you'd think that the US government should have won that race, but they didn't. If the Russians got live aliens, maybe they found out something from what happened at Kapuskin Yar that gave them the edge in the space race. Is it possible that the Soviet Union gained a strategic advantage in the so-called space race because of help it received from an extraterrestrial visitor? But if so, then how did the United States so quickly catch up and some would argue overtake them by being the first to put humans on the moon? Perhaps the answers are easily obtained, not by examining what the two nations were each admitting to in public, but what they were doing together in secret. What do you guys think about this anyway? Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.